survival horror games have rankings. Do you ever think about this? I do. Far too much, really. But it is something that's always struck me about the genre. You'd think horror games that are largely about building a tense atmosphere of scares would be averse to incentivizing the player to play like a clown for the sake of getting a cooler grade at the end. But somehow, it just works. Most horror game scoring rubrics are pretty simplistic. Most Fatal Frames, for instance, grade the player with a letter rank based purely on their clear time. Resident Evil games are similar but composite in things like how much you save and how many first aid sprays you use. But in this genre, few are as complex as Silent Hill's sprawling 10-star ranking system. Which is actually a bit misleading, because this is really a score out of 100. 10 points is just one big star, and every small star is one point. Anyway, as you can see, Silent Hill games grade players on a variety of criteria, each of which contribute to the total score. Every criteria awards a fixed amount of points, with maximum in each adding up to a total of 100 points, or 10 stars. Now, if you look around on the internet, you'll find plenty of guides for each Silent Hill game about what you need to get in each criteria to achieve the maximum, but it's much harder to find details on exactly how it's calculating that total. Which leads me to today's inanity! What's the lowest possible score you could get? Usually, this isn't so complex a question to answer. For Silent Hill 2, the answer is 7 points out of 100. Probably. Sourced from the Silent Hill 2 official complete guidebook is the details of the scoring rubric, and taking the minimum possible values of each category gives you a total of 7. Nothing super crazy here. I didn't actually attempt this one because on paper it didn't even sound that interesting. Also, I submit I couldn't actually find any details on Silent Hill 3 scoring because I don't own any of the guidebooks and I wasn't about to drop the money people are asking for them on eBay, but in Silent Hill 3 the game docks you 15 points for using beginner mode, so I suspect scoring 0 on this one is probably trivial. So this brings us to Silent Hill 1, and suddenly I had a much harder time calculating the answer since Silent Hill 1's rubric is frankly really weird. Once again referencing the Silent Hill Perfect Navigation book, let's try to unpick this knot. Firstly, the difficulty. Selecting easy mode removes 5 points from your total. Notably, this is the only criteria on which the game will deduct points, remember that it will be important later. In fact, let's keep track of the running total, it'll make things easier. From here, there's the game clear count. This will always be our first playthrough, and your first playthrough inherently awards 2 points, giving us a current total of minus 3. Next we have the ending type, and this adds a wrinkle. UFO ending would be the lowest scorer here, but you can't access UFO without New Game Plus, and New Game Plus would add both one clear to the game clear count, awarding 2 points, and it'd knock the game out of easy mode, since New Game Plus files increment the difficulty by one level each time you complete the game, taking away the minus 5 we have from playing on easy. You could therefore think of UFO as having an inherent value of 7 points, and this is clearly much more than the 1 point we would gain by simply targeting the bad ending on a fresh file, so we'll go for this. Our total at this point would therefore be minus 2. Now, save count. This is simple, if you save more than 31 times, you get nothing. Still minus 2. Continue count, same deal. Die more than 10 times total in one playthrough, and boom, no points. Minus 2. Clear time similarly awards you with no points if your playthrough takes longer than 721 minutes, or 12 hours. Easy enough, I opted to resolve this problem by just leaving the game on overnight in the very first area, so I could start all my experiments from a save file that has well over 12 hours logged. Our total remains minus 2. Next, we have the item count. The book specifies that an item count below 45 gets 0 points, so if we pick up nothing except what's strictly necessary for game progression, we should also score 0 on this. Minus 2. Bonus item count is a separate category from the main item count and gives you 2 points per bonus item collected. Bonus items are things like the Hyper Blaster and the Chainsaw. Since we'll be using a fresh file for this, we don't need to worry about this. Zero points again, staying at minus two. Kill count is where the formula becomes complicated. This is a bit tricky to explain, but you have two values, kills done with melee weapons and kills done with guns. It divides both values by five. It then does one more calculation depending on which number was greater, where it halves whichever kill count you had more of and then sums the two together, giving you your total. This is honestly easier to explain by just stepping you through the calculation, it's a bit hard to grasp in the abstract. For instance, if you killed 100 enemies with both methods, your value would be 20 for both A and B. One of these values halved is 10. That 10 plus the remaining 20 would equal 30, thus giving you the maximum points for this category since the maximum is 30. The goal of this somewhat confusing formula is to make it so players need to have a roughly even spread of kills across both types of weapon in order to attain the maximum. Knowing this, in order to keep our score low, we need to make sure all of our kills over the run are of the same type, and also kill as little as possible. This lets us simplify a little. If we only kill the mandatory fights, there are only 6 required kills in the whole game. The first air screamer in the cafe, split head, twin feeler, float stinger, sibyl, and the final boss. If all of these kills are done with the same method, the calculation is 6 divided by 5 divided by 2, which results in 0 0.6. 
Does this game round up or down? Well, before we worry about that, we can actually get this down even further. Twin Feeler can be removed as a necessary kill by abusing a difficult speedrun glitch that allows you to walk out of bounds from the antique shop back to the hospital, bypassing the Twin Feeler fight entirely so we can knock the kill count down to 5, resulting in 0.5 as our end result. Still don't know if that rounds up or down, though. And you may be thinking, why not remove Sybil from the kill count by using the Red Liquid to skip her fight? Unfortunately, using the Red Liquid would change our earning from bad to bad plus, which would cause us to gain 2 points. Since we can roughly value a single kill under the system to be about 0.1, removing one kill is clearly not worth gaining two points, so Sybil stays in. So after all of that confusing nonsense, our end result from this is 0.5. So our score has become minus 1.5. Odd, but go with it. And now for our final category, the shooting style. This formula is also somewhat complicated, but we really don't need to concern ourselves with the particulars here. This style grades you on your accuracy with ranged weapons, so for our purposes we want it as low as possible. An easy way to go about this is to simply waste all of our starting handgun ammo on nothing and completing the rest of the game with purely melee weapons, ensuring that we will only have no aiming shots, thus scoring zero. So from all of this, we have a game plan for a theoretical lowest scoring Silent Hill 1 run. We can't use guns since we want to score nothing for aiming style, in addition to not wanting to collect the ammo that a gun uses in order to keep the item count as low as possible. So our lowest scoring run is a knife only, no heal, since we can't collect health drinks, bad ending playthrough. Such a playthrough would attain a rank of negative 1.5 stars. Whether or not that rounds is irrelevant, since it should result in zero stars either way. Now, this was all theory. Nobody had actually done this run to prove the concept, as far as I could find, and I just had to know. So I, very stupidly, actually attempted to do this playthrough, just to see what would happen. I had to answer the question, can you finish Silent Hill 1 with zero stars? We're off to a flying start here. It didn't go well. So it turns out that completing Silent Hill 1 knife only is actually extremely hard. This is not Resident Evil, the game is not really balanced for it. And particularly since I'm not allowing myself any healing items, the health I have at the start of the game is all I am ever going to get. And while I am playing on easy for this, it's still not a pushover, you can still die pretty easily. Even knife only speedruns, people who've put time and effort into mastering this particular method of play, collect at least a couple of healing items simply because evading damage with such a singular restrictive attack option is so difficult. So it paradoxically turns out that scoring as badly as you possibly can actually requires you to play in a way that is incredibly hard. Clearly, I had my work cut out for me here. Fortunately, by referencing existing knife only speedruns, I was able to get past the major hurdle that was literally the first enemy in the game. Yes! 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 That's incredibly hard to do! That's so specific! You have to- you gotta get him- you gotta counter hit! Right- oh, that's hard. What a- what a- what a- what a- Jesus Christ, what a start to this. It turns out you need to like, quick turn with somewhat fiddly timing to get this, it's harder than it looks. But at least it's only one timing. Things proceed relatively uneventfully until we get to the first boss in the school, Splithead. Right away I have a problem with health conservation. I need to get close to Splithead to knife them, but every single time they nudge me like this, I take damage. I don't know if a lot of people know that this attack even does damage, but it does. Not a lot of damage, but damage. And since I only have the one health bar to last me through the entire game, I had to not only get through this, but get through it with as much health as possible. And this is a real problem since every boss fight lasts ages because the knife has terrible damage. There's also the matter that once we progress the fight to phase 2, Splithead busts out the instant kill move. Nay! That's why it's challenging. Because if you f you see why this is going to be pain, right? You understand now, because if you fuck that up, you die. Instantly. <laughs> Do you see the problem? Normally you just shoot the dude in the mouth and it's easy, but since I have to directly dance in and out of danger many times, it's hard to win this. The timing on this is... particular, it's hard. Many deaths were accumulated here, which is fine since I need to die a lot anyway, but getting the timing down for this to eventually get through was a process. But it can be done. Yes! <laughs> I'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth, it's dead, fuck off, I'm out. When all was said and done, this single fight took me about 20 minutes to complete, and this was the first boss. Yikes! And I ended with my health in the orange. I still have at least three bosses to go. Things once again proceed relatively smoothly from here, with only one snag in a narrow room in the hospital. 
Give him the slip. No, there's not enough room to give him the slip, man. Look at this. Damage. I can't get through. It's impossible. Ah. Oh, GG. Ah. Huh? Eh. Yes. Nurses are fortunately easy to brute force your way past in this setting because their grab, while annoying, doesn't actually do any damage, allowing you to continue to get grabbed and just shake them off to keep pushing them back until you can get into a door or something. Once again, past that, smooth sailing until we get to the antique shop. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be performing twin feeler skip in order to, well, skip twin feeler, to remove that boss from the kill count. If you've never seen this skip before, how it works is that you have to intentionally bait a romper enemy into jumping on you in such a way that the animation of you being knocked over lands you inside a loading transition. This results in Harry's position being offset in some way that I don't really understand, but it allows you to just walk straight through the back wall here, which conveniently, if you just run straight forward, lands you right on the building with the water tower, where you can just walk down the stairs and head back to the hospital to start the float stinger fight. The snag here is that this skip requires you to get hit by a romper in a very particular way to perform, and since I'm trying to conserve health here, I kind of want to get this first try. <laughs> just hard cuts. Tips when Harry dies. <laughs> I do not get it first try. I have a lot of practice with executing this glitch and it's still hard. Any trick that relies on enemy AI behavior is inherently random, so even the very best players have a success rate with this trick of like 60% at the most. Anyway, since I can die and retry as much as I like, eventually I stick the landing and move on to Float Stinger. Get, get, get! And, oh boy, Float Stinger. There's not really that much detail to go into with the strategy here. Dodge, swing, dodge, repeat, but it takes so long, and I can't afford to tank more than another couple of hits. At this point, I gave up on flexing and opted to pridelessly save state my way through this encounter, and it still took an excruciating 30 minutes. This game sucks, knife only. Don't do it. I wish to not discuss this further. I win. <laughs> Fuck it. Shit. How long did that take? But discuss I must, as I'm the genius who decided to make a video about this. So we move on again, relatively uneventfully, until the next boss, Sybil. What? What? It's Wait, that didn't... You need to hit it twice with the knife? The lock has health? What the fuck do you mean the lock has health? It takes one hit from the shotgun or a gun. The lock has health? <laughs> the lock has fucking health? I thought it was just one hit from anything. I didn't know it would take like 16 from the knife. And I had to make up my own strategies for this one because even knife only speedruns don't fight this boss since they usually get the bad plus ending. This also does not go well. Oh. Oh. You can't hit me through a horse. It's a horse, stupid. Ah, shit! <laughs> Until I have an idea. Oh. Oh, no, I guess. Okay, no, she can run out of ammo. Go figure. I honestly didn't know that. That's news to me. So, interestingly, as it transpires, Sybil's gun actually has limited ammo. Only 10 bullets, and that's by far the biggest problem. In fact, it's actually the single most damaging attack in the entire game at 60 points of damage. The base health is 100, by the way. So at this stage of the game, getting shot once will kill me. But if I just dance around and make her waste ammo, we progress on to phase two. And my strategy here? Honestly, pretty straightforward. A welcome reprieve, given how painful everything else has been. Just keep walking backwards against the outside edge and she'll never get close enough to hit you. Repeat for, frankly, far too long, and eventually, she goes down. was some shit. Now, due to having copped a couple of karate chops to the cheeks in the process of killing Sybil, I am now down to basically a shred of remaining health. Meaning that in order to complete this run, I need to get through all of the final area, nowhere, and the final boss without getting hit. How hard was this? Actually, that part was pretty easy. I've speedrun this game for like seven years. I'm pretty much home free at this point. Anyway, the final boss itself cannot be attacked with melee weapons. There's a force field blocking you from getting close. 
but the game has a failsafe baked in that will enable you to win by timeout after 30 seconds if the game detects you have no ammo left in your inventory. So all you have to do is avoid two loops of the boss's lightning attack by strafing around, and that's it! A minimum rank playthrough of Silent Hill 1. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, after all of that, the moment of truth, the final result. What score do I get? Say it, Kaiwa. One! How did I get one point? One point! One singular point. One point. One Singular point. One point! So, what went wrong here? My theoretical score should have been negative 1.5, right? The problem was item count. 47 items. This is above the 45 specified in the book, so I gained the three points for that. This playthrough was, I assure you, conducted with zero pickups that were not completely necessary. It is impossible to complete a playthrough and not collect at least this number of items. Therefore, it's impossible to end up with below 45, so your final score will instead always be positive 1.5. Which I guess answers the question of whether or not the game rounds decimals down or up since it rounded down to one star. Also, as an aside, it doesn't really matter but bears mentioning. My kill count actually came out to four enemies, but I defeated five. So, what gives there? I'm actually not conclusively sure, but I suspect it's because defeating the final boss via timeout causes it to not count as either a fighting or a shooting kill. That's purely a guess, I can't prove that, but it seems like a pretty good guess to me. So, can you complete Silent Hill 1 with zero points? No! No, you bloody well cannot. You need to cut at least three items off this to achieve that, and there just aren't three items to cut across the whole game. Therefore, it is impossible to obtain less than one star. Or is it? So, now we exit the realm of relative normalcy into pure nonsense, but I was not satisfied with this result. Revisiting the rubric once more, I found myself frustrated that it was impossible to use UFO ending on New Game, because if you could use UFO ending, you'd lose one point, bringing the total back down to 0.5. Furthermore, since UFO ending completes the game much earlier, you'd collect less items, almost certainly dropping us below this 45 item count, theoretically giving us an end score of negative 2.5. We'd gain 2 points from the channeling stone since it counts as a bonus item, giving us an end total of negative 0.5 stars. Probably even lower since this run ends before Sybil too, giving us one less kill, but since we now know the game rounds down, I've decided not to care. This scenario is impossible to produce, since UFO ending is locked to New Game Plus, and as established before, New Game Plus adds a ton of points to your result inherently, so I thought, Screw it, what if we didn't have that limitation? So I cheated. I straight up hacked the channeling stone into my inventory on a new game playthrough via a game shark and set about once again playing through the entire thing in this highly masochistic fashion. Now, the first hurdle, does the game even let you do this? Like, will it even let you use the channeling stone to trigger the UFO scenes outside of New Game Plus? Does it work? Does it work? Holy shit it does. <laughs> Well, first test passed. Smooth sailing once more until the school boss, which I once again had to knife to death, although I will say my second attempt, much better than my first. I actually kind of started to get it. I've gotten better at that. I'll get like, can I, can I have some credit for that? <laughs> I still think it sucks ass, but I've actually measurably improved at not fucking that up. The rest of the playthrough proceeds similarly to last time, the channeling stone continues to work where it's supposed to, unnecessary items are avoided, and everything was killed with the knife, which of course, took ages, because of course, Float Stinger sucks. And now, the final test. Does UFO ending even work on New Game when all the criteria are met? Okay, does this even work? Do I get UFO ending? Sure seems like it. Well, it sure does. I was pretty pleased with myself, cheating aside. I was ready to finally see a beautiful, blank, zero ranking score. What made them want to put this ending in the game, do you think? Like, for what reason? Three people answered drugs immediately, really? Come on, guys. ONE! What do you mean, one? What a scam, dude! I still got one? <laughs> no, the plus one! The channeling- it did count! The channeling stone gave me plus two. But no, I should've- No, items gave- How the fuck am I getting one? Hang on! 
Something's fishy here. <laughs> this is bullshit. Still one. Still one point. Even cheating to produce an impossible playthrough. Still ended up with one single sausage of a point. How? How is this still happening? Can the game just not display zero? I got well below 45 items. Nothing else on this result screen seems abnormal, so what the hell? Well, you see, the perfect navigation book is not perfect. Yes, the tome I have put so much stock in for two entire videos I've made about Silent Hill 1 now. Wrong. How can it be? Well, it's true. The error lies in this part. Below 45 items equals zero points. This is, sadly, inaccurate. Per research done by speedrun.com user Quidrex, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, into the star ranking system by way of actually looking into the game's code itself, almost everything the perfect navigation book says about the ranking system is true except for this one thing. You actually gain one point every 15 items collected, not zero for below 45. Which means there's 32 items collected in the UFO run, the absolute minimum possible, I will remind you, still earned two points. Once again, causing an end score of positive 1.5 stars, rounding down to one. Thus, once again, I ask, can you complete Silent Hill 1 with a zero star ranking? No. Literally, it is not possible because of the way the formula works. You can even cheat to produce an impossible playthrough, and one point will still find a way to sneak in. And so far, this is where the final conclusion stands. Barring some kind of new future skip that would allow you to skip more items, which I'm not ruling out, but no such thing exists at time of writing, can you complete Silent Hill 1 with a zero star ranking? No. No, you can't. I tried my very hardest, but you can get one star. And that in itself is pretty impressive, if I do say so myself. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you all next time. Hey, thank you very much for watching that video. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a like, a comment, and a subscribe. It really helps me know how people felt about the video, etc. Because this is the longest one I've edited so far in general. Uh, I've been editing this since January, I think. It took a while. Not that I've been working on it for literally, like, two and a bit months. I didn't work on it at all for a while because I was too busy getting Shattered Memories World Records. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'd like to credit Big Man Japan for, once again, the scans for the various strategy guides referenced in this video, and Quidrex, whose research into the star system helped this video evolve in the course of production. Because, like, about the video, right? This is my post-video ramble bit. Uh, it started off as something like the previous video I made about Silent Hill, where it was about sort of a theory and an explanation. But then I had to actually test the theory, and it kind of got weird from there. <laughs> it became something more like a challenge video halfway through production. I'm not really sure what this came out as, honestly, but I think it's fun to watch, at least. Watching it back in the edit, I think it came out interestingly enough. But uh, it became sort of uh, unlike what it started as. Isn't that funny? Aren't creative projects weird like that? Did you know that Konami put out an official Silent Hill blanket? Like, you can just buy this from their store. It's like, it's got the Silent Hill map on it and everything. This is real. This is official merchandise they put out. I don't know. It's kind of funny that they sell this. Ow. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I don't know what my next video is going to be. I'm in the process of, like, trying to get a computer upgrade. And I don't want to start anything new until that's done, because swapping rigs in the middle of making a large video is a recipe for everything to not work. So, uh, we'll see how that pans out. Thank you once again for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, etc, etc. I hate saying that, but the YouTube algorithm really does benefit from it. Ta-ta for now. I'll see you on the next video.